Thanks for joining us as author Dwayne Anderson presents the diagram, Five Things to Help New Christians Grow. The link for the diagram can be found in the description box below. Join us now as Dwayne teaches through this material. Today we'll be looking at five things you do to help new Christians grow. And we see that the first of these is to pray for the people. In Exodus 18, verses 19 through 21, Moses' father-in-law gave him this advice. Listen now to my voice. I will give you counsel, and God will be with you. Stand before God for the people, so that you may bring the difficulties to God. And you shall teach them the statutes and the laws, and show them the way in which they must walk, and the work that they must do. Moreover, you shall select from all the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. As we look at these verses, we see his first responsibility was to pray for the people and to bring their difficulties to God. We see a couple of examples of this. In Numbers 9.8, Moses said, Stand still, that I may hear what the Lord will command concerning you. And then in Numbers 27.5, So Moses brought their case before the Lord. Daniel had this same attitude. In Daniel 6.10, it says, Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home, and in his upper room, with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since early days. Daniel was in a foreign land. He had been taken as a captive. His parents were not there to supervise him. But we see that from his early days, he prayed, and he prayed for the people. He prayed for guidance in his own life, that the Lord would lead him and guide him. He purposed in his heart that he would be obedient to God. And we see the same thing in the New Testament. Paul says in uh, Ephesians 3, verses 14 through 19, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his Spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to uh, com comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Here we see that he prayed for five things. First of all, that they would be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. Secondly, that Christ would dwell in their hearts through faith. Third, that they would be rooted and grounded in love. Fourth, that they would be able to comprehend four dimensions, the width, the length, the depth, and the height. He prayed that in their hearts they would be taking root in the love of Christ. And as they took root in the love of Christ, they would grow strong. And then he says, and that they would be filled with all the fullness of God. God works as people pray for one another and as we pray that God will meet the difficulties, the needs in our lives to help us grow and take deeper and deeper root in his love. As we come to section two, we see that we teach them the word of God. Uh, Moses was told to teach them ordinances and laws. As we come to the New Testament, we see in Acts 20, 27, Paul is talking to the elders in Ephesus and he says, For I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. When did he do that? Well, if we go back to Acts um, 19, verses 9 and 10, it says, But when some were hardened and did not believe, but spoke evil of the way before the multitude, he departed from them and withdrew the disciples, reasoning daily, in the school of Tyrannus. And this continued for two years that all who dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. We see how Paul trained the new Christians in Ephesus. 
when these men first became Christians, it says he separated them from the multitude because the multitude had hardened their hearts and did not believe. But it says he withdrew the disciples, reasoning daily in the school of Tyrannus. And so we see very, some very key lessons. We, uh, first of all, we pray for the people and bring their difficulties to God, but then we teach them the word of God so that they know what God's word taught. And as we come to section three, we see that one of the things that we do is we show people the way to walk. In 1 Corinthians 11, 1, Paul said, imitate me just as I imitate Christ. And so imitation, we do what we see somebody else do. They watched him throughout his life. They saw that he was walking exactly what he was teaching, that he was imitating Christ. And so he says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. In other words, watch my example. We see that he said the same thing uh, earlier in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. He says, therefore, I urge you, imitate me. And so now he's at, saying, this is how you imitate me. You imitate me as I imitate Christ. But Christ, what had he done? Well, we see that in John 13, 14, Christ said, if I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. It was common in that day when they first got to a place where they were having a meal that uh, the host would either have a servant or the host himself would wash their feet. The two of the disciples had prepared the meal for the uh, Last Supper. And as they met in that upper room, we see that the disciples were not thinking about washing one another's feet. In fact, at that, uh, that very night, they'd been discussing among themselves who would be the greatest. As a result, Christ had to show them by example. And so he said, if I'm your Lord and teacher, and I've washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. In other words, you ought to serve one another. You ought to look for opportunities to help others in their spiritual growth. And he says, I've given you an example. I'm showing you what to do. So we show them the way to walk. As we come to section four, we show them the work that they must do or how to do the work. It tells us in Acts 20, 20, how I kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly and from house to house. As we see Paul here, he took others along with him. And as he took them along with them, he was showing them how to do the work of God. And he showed them how to explain the gospel. He showed them how to help other Christians grow as they had grown themselves. And so he was showing them the work to do. Here we see Paul also took up many people with him. It says, And so Opater of Berea accompanied him to Asia, also Aristarchus and Secundus of the Thessalonians, and Gaius of Derby, and Timothy and Tychicus and Trophimus of Asia. Here we see that as Paul traveled from place to place through Macedonia, he had Christians from various cities traveling with him. Here we see that they were, uh, he was showing them how to minister as he took them with him. And James did the same thing in James 1.22. He said, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. So he says, this is the work to do, be doers of the word. And so we see that whether it was the, the apostles, whether it was uh, Paul as he w went to the Gentiles, and they took the others with them to show them how to minister. And so we see that we show them how to do the work so that they know how to do the work and can carry on the same work with others. As we come to this final point, we share the work. As we think about the first four things, many will become um, Christians who have uh, certain qualifications that will equip them to teach others also. And so we see that uh, as we help new Christians grow, we want to develop uh, able men. These are ones who are able to Share the word of God. We see that in sharing that work with people who are able to teach the word of God and to help people understand 
the message of Christ's death and resurrection to help the people understand repentance and faith, that they can become equipped to also help others come to Christ. So we look, first of all, for able men. Then we look for men who fear God. As we think about those that we're teaching, uh, we see whether it's men or women, they become uh, those who fear God. They have a desire to serve the Lord and obey Him. And their desire to serve and obey Him gives them a desire to tell others about Him. Whether it's their family, whether it's friends, whether it's their neighbors or acquaintances or whoever it may be. But we see that they become healthy, reproducing Christians who pass on what they have shared because they fear God and they want to be obedient to God and uh, obey His word. But we also see that they must be men of truth or people of truth as they share the word of God and not their own opinions. Many people share their own opinions. They talk about God, but they don't share what the Word of God says. There's a great difference. You can talk about God, but if you're not sharing what the Word of God says, it's only the Word of God that's living and powerful. It's only the Word of God that's sharper than a two-edged sword. It's only the Word of God that we know we're speaking the truth as we share it within its context. And so we are to share the Word of God. And then finally we see that uh, we're to be people who hate covetousness. And as we think about people who hate covetousness, that's a desire to get for self. We see that uh, in 1 Timothy 6, 9 and 10, uh, that it warns us to uh, avoid that. And instead, we're to be men of God and women of God who share the word of God because we are doing it to help others not for our self-gain. We're doing it to be obedient to Christ and to carry out His command. Because as we share the Word of God and pass on the Word of God to others, God is working in their lives to bring them to Christ, to help them grow so that they become reproducing Christians and can do the same with the next generation and the next generation. There are five things that we do to help new Christians grow. We Number one, Pray for the people. Then we, number two, we teach them the word of God. Number three, we show them the way to walk. And then number four, we show them the work to do. And then number five, we share the work with them. And as we do these five things, they will become healthy reproducing Christians who are able to pass on to the others the things that the Lord has taught them through his word.